I would like them to stay, I would say, beyond the uh, today's talk and uh, today's discussion. I'm a lawyer, so I wouldn't like to uh, be a representative or of uh, one uh, political side. And uh, well, uh, from my private nature, I have discovered uh, many years ago that this is really a very convenient uh, from uh, the point uh, of view of being independent, uh, a very convenient position. It is not a convenient position from the direct current political perspective because one side or another would like you to share their opinion. What is interesting, uh, the conflict is very radical and is very dense. And in this case, you probably already have an opinion. And I wouldn't like to, uh, I would say, agree or disagree with this opinion, honestly, okay? So I'm going to uh, tell you about the basic facts, about the basic controversies uh, for about 45 minutes. Uh, then we uh, can uh, have uh, uh, your questions or uh, your comments. Of course, every question and every comment is uh, uh, welcome. And uh, let me repeat uh, last that uh, I'm not the host, even from the technical perspective of this uh, of this uh, uh, meeting. So this is Ms. Wikowska, who is the chair, the chairwoman in this case, or the chairperson uh, of of the meeting. So uh, you are uh, also <clears throat> very welcome to to uh, interfere me or to, uh, to uh, uh, pay attention uh, what is written, for instance, on a chat. However, I cannot guarantee that I will be able to answer very much directly at the same moment to, to everything. Okay, so let us try to get uh, it with my monologue first, unless you desperately want to uh, say something in between. And then uh, uh, let uh, me give you, or let uh, us give you to, <clears throat> uh, to have the floor to everybody. And I will try to answer uh, the questions uh, which are possible to be answered, of course. Okay? All right. Uh, so generally speaking, uh, uh, today's, let's say, presentation is going to be divided in two steps. The first one is going to be the introduction, uh, where I'm going to tell you about the basic scopes, uh, basic achievements and failures of post-communist reforms, because this is a very basic origin of this perspective. And then uh, I'm going to uh, draw uh, the, uh, the uh, most important steps in the conflict between the government and the opposition and between uh, the Polish government and the European, European institutions, okay? Uh, so let us, let us uh, start. Uh, the communism fell down, theoretically speaking, already in 1989. So this is pretty much time ago, pretty long time ago, 33 years or 32 and a half. And this is, uh, well, uh, a good moment to say uh, about the achievements and about the fellows of uh, reforms since that time. In Poland, 
uh, a very uh, famous moment uh, said uh, in the communist or very, very directly post-communist governmental broadcast uh, in 89 said uh, by, um, as I said, uh, sorry, a, a very famous Polish actress stating that, ladies and gentlemen, on the 4th of June, 1989, because it was in 1989, uh, communism in Poland fell down. And full stop. This is that was the end of the citation. Everybody was very happy, including me. I was on the second course uh, of my studies at the University of Warsaw, and uh, uh, I thought it was really so that we are going to move to skip uh, into another uh, uh, time, which is going to be very different uh, than before concerning everything. And first of all, uh, the level of, of living. Uh, the real socialist system was not only the great terror and the totalitarianism, because it was impossible to uh, take up an economic activity, for instance, and everything belonged to the state, as it was said, so in fact to the government, but it was also a great miserability. So uh, people used to earn about $30 per month. Uh, and a pair of trousers, American jeans, uh, cost $20, which was almost uh, a month of, of labor in the system. And everybody used to wear such genes, I remember. So the real socialism used to mean a great poverty, a great miserability. And uh, between 1989, uh, sorry, 81, when uh, martial law uh, was introduced in, in Poland, in a communist Poland by the coup d'etat, and the solidarity movement fell down. And 1989, we used to have uh, regular underground institutions uh, concerning uh, trade unions, uh, uh, concerning uh, a lot of not registered uh, societies, preferably by the church or inside the um, uh, Roman Catholic Church, and we had a lot of underground newspapers and underground books. Being a 21-year-old person, I read most of anti-communist books that had been published in the underground uh, in the communist Poland. For just possessing the book, uh, everybody could have been imprisoned for not less than three years, uh, but everybody used to read them. So there was no uh, question of, uh, uh, of uh, the penalty in this case. Uh, in 1989, quite suddenly, that is within half a year, this system collapsed. So first of all, uh, it was the ideology that collapsed completely. And uh, uh, a very negative approach to the real socialism was taken upon the consideration. So in this case, everybody became an individual person became a liberal, stating that now, or from now on, everybody, uh, no, sorry, everything depends on uh, a single person uh, for his or her own. And uh, uh, there are a lot of 
negative consequences in everyday life, but they are only of a communist or former of a former communist characters. Somewhere after a decade, uh, it was realized that a very negative approach, uh, negative consequences are still or were still in Polish social, political and reform economic transformations. And that not only they had not been reformed or removed, but it is not possible to say uh, where we are going, comrades, as it used to be said, and the Ancien Regime uh, form. Since that time, as I pointed out in point four, of course, there were serious, let's say, achievements. But there were a lot of fellas. And within these fellas, a lot of people seem to be excluded from the present, well, I wouldn't say benefits, but the uh, present circumstances of life or present social participation, active participation in life, uh, and even the people of, let's say, upper middle class or the middle class are being concerned, they are much, uh, not much further, they are much less developed in reforming uh, activities than, let's say, in a regular contemporary state. In this case, if you compare it, Holland, the Netherlands, and Poland, you would see that uh, the scope of, um, uh, let's say, income is about one fourth uh, towards Poland in comparison to the Netherlands. It is much less, of course, than in 1989. Nobody works for $30 per month, but uh, a lot of institutions are still post-communist, no matter what political views we have, and they have not been reformed since that time. Uh, the social and, of course, political and legal uh, uh, causes, um, I started to describe. There are a lot of groups that seem to be excluded from the society in their meaning. And uh, uh, they have really problems or real problems uh, to direct their fate as employees in both the public and the private sector. There is still a question of stability of a lot of families, not only in Poland, but in other post-communist countries. The next question uh, is uh, a problem uh, of uh, political reforms which have not been completed uh, for 32 uh, years, and they are very basic. One of them, I'm going to tell you about it later on, is the public health service. And another one, according to the Polish government, but let me uh, underline that I do not represent any political sphere here. So according to one of such spheres, uh, another uh, uh, sphere, another reform which has not been concluded is the judiciary, is the judiciary. And we're going to uh, say about it uh, a little bit later on. Uh, the third one 
is perhaps is perhaps uh, uh, the public administration. For instance, we do not have a civil service of independent, stable, nominated civil servants, independent from the current government. No Polish government was ever probably interested in creating of such a group. We have 2,000 civil servants only being nominated for 150,000 uh, uh, governmental employees. So there are civil servants in an English translation, but they are not civil servants as such, although the constitution provides that. In other post-communist countries, for instance, in post-Soviet territories, uh, there is a, a term used, the constitution guarantees that. But this is, of course, uh, not very much true. The constitution declares something like that. The third point is the political instability in Poland for more than 30 years. Uh, and this is also applicable to another post-communist countries. So we have no political programs of political parties. We have no political responsibility in it. Even the names are very funny. For instance, the Polish ruling party is law and justice. It is not said whether this is a conservative party or not. I heard official declaration that this is a conservative party. But I heard it, well, quite recently. And beforehand, it was the party of reforms. On the other side, the civic platform is a party to which everybody can jump potentially because this is the platform. Yes. We have the left, but from one side, this is a radical left. And from another side, it was criticized as being the post-communist left. We have the agrarian party, which is quite strange in a contemporary political modern world. And uh, we have some other political parties and movements, even in the present Polish parliament, some of them uh, even had uh, problems to name themselves. So one, which is named as direct democracy now, uh, is named by uh, its head, by the way, a rock man, a rock singer. And another one, a very right one, is called confederacy which means that it's also applicable potentially for everybody, like the platform. Yes. So it is difficult to say, to identify whether we have a stable liberalism, conservative, conservatism, collectivism, and the Roman Catholic social science, which is, uh, or what is important, what was always important in the Polish society, uh, in the Polish political party programs nowadays. And in this case, as I started to say, uh, we have both the positive but also negative institutional implications. The health public system or the health service, the health care public system, the local government, the legal system, the globalizational tendencies, and so on and so on. And another step in the first part is the institutional building. The fellows of reforms, as I said already twice, and I'm going to say it only once, is the public health service. It is not possible to get any liberal approach. And this is still based 
on a socialist level. So every kind of, uh, let's say, free, financially free, free of charge, uh, health service is for everybody. Of course, this is a utopia. But no Polish government, not any uh, of a Polish government uh, ever tried to change it. The still uh, existing idea is, in this case, also the so-called social state. Social state. So the state has to give something to liquidate yes, the miserability. Because this is the idea of a modern state as well. I have a good friend in the Netherlands, by uh, the way, who emigrated from Poland as my good friend in 1981 at the age of 13. And he thinks pretty the same. He lost uh, his uh, uh, position at uh, a public educational system, and he thinks precisely in the same way. For the rest of his life, if he was not able to find any other occupation, and of course, the local uh, self-government is going to support him in this matter, he is going to receive at least 70% of his last salary, okay, per month. We also have some fellas or some reforms also failed in the self-government, for instance, in police forces, in the so-called third sector, so the NGOs, system uh, and uh, in the corporations, which means the judiciary. And here we may say that we used to have used to have problems in the self-control of these institutions. And this is actually the problem. Uh, the problems I also said about uh, is the narrow civil service uh, corps, although it does exist in the constitution. Uh, and uh, of course, the legal approach within the lobbies and within the judicial power. Now it is said to be, or it seems to be the most controversial although it is quite difficult to observe substantial deep discussions on that from the position of the government and from the position uh, of the opposition. Also, and really last but not uh, least, uh, we have the question of a position of government in economy that was completely neglected until 215, sorry, 2015, uh, and what is going to be reintroduced at the moment. For instance, an ex-prime minister, a very anti-prime minister of today, and a very well-known person, Donald Tusk, is to say, that Polish airlines can be sold to foreign hands, let's say, uh, because uh, they don't uh, uh, they don't give any serious income. Now they do, and I know this, uh, and I know this. Uh, a statement 
of the ex-prime minister because I can hear it uh, very, very often in the so-called governmental media, yes? where he has been being criticized all the time. Okay. Uh, the same is applicable to the so-called euro currency. Uh, the governmental, if they are governmental, but they uh, are being named as the governmental media or the governmental medium, uh, the most popular headlines say that it would be or it was a disaster if the euro currency had been applied to, to Poland. Uh, of course, from the context of the EU and also the transatlantic system, uh, we should always have in mind that Polish society is traditionally for such institutions. That is for uh, the Polish membership in both the European Union the NATO treaty and a lot of other international organizations. There, there is no complaint about that. So from the non-political current perspective, international criminal law cooperation is very vivid within such institutions like Europol, Olaf, Interpol. It is going to impact the so-called harmonization of law in a European perspective. No doubt uh, about it. However, uh, there is uh, an open discussion now <clears throat> about the so-called values, whether we still have a universal values or whether the values are Controversial. If they are controversial, we should not say perhaps that they are still values. Because from one side to from one part of another, we would have to select whether we are for or not. The point of neutrality is perfect. Yeah? That is, as I said, I try to be neutral. But if we write, if we put to the constitution, that we are against or we are for the death penalty, we have to say yes or no, because it is not possible to say that we do share both attitudes to that institution. And in this context, there is a question about the European Parliament. I heard uh, again, <clears throat> in the uh, internet media of the law and justice European deputy that we do not need a European parliament, said a member of the European parliament. Why don't we need it? In this, let's say, narrative speech, he argued that uh, Poland does not need it, uh, because of the evolution of the European Parliament. And that uh, the European Parliament competences, as well as other European Union institutions, are spreading out contra legem, that is, contrary to the law, contrary to the treaties. Maybe yes, maybe not. I haven't heard a substantial discussion about that as a lawyer in Poland, where there were two lawyers in both sides specifying that uh, this is not applicable by the European law system or this is, uh, or it does. Yes. So we don't have, uh, we have controversies, but we don't have the solutions of them. And uh, to conclude, as I said, the introductory part, 
we should say that there are general positive trends, but paradoxically, if you get deeper to that, no institutional reforms or no special reforms or no controversial discussions have been solved in many, many spheres. This is a paradox. Yes. And uh, we are quite far from solving the problems, although more than 30 years passed in that. Uh, in this case, we do face now what we didn't face because we thought it was absolutely solved. Some other institutions from the end to the beginning back, like for instance, the monism or dualism in the public international law. In Poland, as I was always taught during my law studies, not only in Poland, by the way, it was said with no doubt that we do face the dualist approach to international legal system. That when we have a collision between the Polish and an international legal norm, the one that is binding is the international one. Now the government argues that this is different. The constitutional court made a verdict that according to the Polish constitution, an international agreement is binding, but it is binding not above the Polish constitution. Why? Because it is clearly written in the basic law of the Republic of Poland. I read this carefully. And I may say that, uh, well, this is a reasonable approach. But beforehand, I'm getting to another uh, part now, but I, I shouldn't. Uh, at the moment, it was never like that so. Because it was always said that we are a part of not only the European, but of at least the transatlantic universal system and the universal binding are more important than the national law, the, the domestic legal system. And for instance, there was uh, an amendment to the Polish constitution about extradition. Originally, the constitution of 1997 stated that it is not possible to extradite a citizen of the Republic of Poland to another state. Now, according to the European Union legal system, it is written as amended in the constitution that not only it is possible, but this is required. So here we've got the direct effect of the European Union law, okay? So there was, or there were two legal systems, but there was no, no conflict about that. There was no conflict about that. And there has been a conflict for some years and presenting the point of view of a conservative approach, it is being argued that this is because of the fact that we don't spread our norms, but this is another side who does it, that does it. That in uh, the treatise, it is, not, it is not possible that the competences of the European law uh, and the European institutions are this, 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 and this. But it is going to be 
movable. On the other side, I should say, it is not, again, a substantial, a substantial discussion in this matter. We have the Polish Constitutional Court verdict, a verdict of October 2020. And we have, I'm going to uh, say about it a little bit later on, uh, a lot of counter proofs from the European legal institutions stating that this is not true. This is not true. And it was always not true. And what's the response of the Polish, I wouldn't say, uh, I wouldn't say governmental uh, lawyers, but theorists of law who support, let's say, the idea of the constitutional court. The argumentation here is that not only Polish constitutional court made such a verdict, but it was also a German, a French, an Italian, and a Romanian one, at least. So there is a problem. There is a problem. And by the way, once I had a presentation because I was asked about Euroscepticism. And the audience seemed not to realize whether this problem really exists. Because it was like a rumor, okay, everybody in the audience and everybody in the room are not Euroskeptics. It was after Brexit, of course. So why one of the oldest society in the world and the oldest constitutional society in the world as such declared or voted against the European Union. Of course, it can be said that, huh, it was really nothing happened. No, that was a very serious situation that happened. And not because of any kind of narrow-mindedness, but of the whole nation, because this is impossible, not only from the position of the political correctness, not because of populism, but because of much more serious problems that had not been realized by the other side. I don't know whether you agree with that or not. So again, such institutions uh, are being a question of a conflict of laws now. Of course, it is an implication of no political responsibility of post-communist parties, not only in Poland. For instance, in the Czech Republic, one of my favorite parties, I'm sorry, I don't want to offend any Czech, of course, is the party called Yes 2015. Yes 2015. Everybody can vote for the party yes 2015 because it doesn't say anything. This is not a political program, okay? Uh, the question <clears throat> in this case uh, is not only to uh, discuss the negative tendencies and to prepare for them, uh, but this is also a style of administration, the style of politics and the style of policies. This style or these styles are seem to be different at the moment, are still to be different uh, or seems to be, seem, seem to be different at the moment. And they were not something like six years ago in Poland. So let us uh, say 
in details, but briefly, uh, about the constitution, constitutional and judicial fellows in Poland, but not only since 2015, but also with the respect to what had happened before, what I wanted to describe. I put it in three or four stages, three and a half. When the first one was the constitutional court and or constitutional judges crisis that happened, that occurred in 2015. Do you know what had happened that time or what happened that time? The present opposition, parliamentary opposition, and the ruling party before autumn 2015 uh, enacted a new law on constitutional court. And this party nominated three judges uh, as new members of constitutional of a constitutional court. However, in October, new parliamentary elections occurred, and uh, the ruling party became an opposition, a very hard opposition or a hard opposition. And an opposition became a ruling party. So the law and justice stated that the new president, also an ex-member of the law and justice, didn't sign their nominations. And here there was the first question, who the president of the Republic of Poland in fact is. It was said, he is just a notary public signing the nominations because this is a prestigious nomination. So it would be nice to become nominated by the president. By the way, in this case, the National Chamber of Public Notaries uh, protested that please do not name the president as a notary public because he is not a notary public in any case. But the president presented an interpretation that he is not just a person signing it. In an oppositional press, he started to have a nickname, a ball pen. Yes. So he seemed to say, He's not, or he's been being not, a person to sign. This is a substantial division of power, like the government, but controlling everything, according to check and balance idea. Okay? The president didn't sign the nomination, and uh, three new members nominated by the law and justice were uh, nominated and signed immediately by the president to become constitutional judges. So they started to be called as doubles judges or double judges. But from the point of view, it was controversial whether the law as such was not broken, but maybe it was broken. The point, and that was the first point, was a style, but not a style of one side of the coin, of one side of the conflict. The both sides, because just before the elections, they, the candidates, passed by the parliament. 
Yes? So that was the first fella or disclosure. And then it was said, okay, so you had passed them, but we are not going to fulfill all the actions. And in this case, they are not going to be nominated. What is interesting, there were problems of the publication of this nomination by the parliament. And it was a constitutional discussion whether a nomination was signed completely by the parliament or as president had uh, argued by the president as well, because otherwise the president is just a decorative person. And the counter argument of that was that the president is not an administrative officer in a substantial part because we have the parliamentary and not the presidential system, okay? Here, as I said, there was a question of a collision, but within the ruling style, which did not happen before. Or it did maybe, but as the Polish saying says, in white gloves and not very directly, okay? The stage two is the same or a quite similar situation with new nominations to the constitutional court. The new government where the law and justice scored the most uh, majority of voters, more than 40%. That was the first time in Poland ever, yes, uh, nominated uh, new judges to constitutional court. And in this case, it was discovered that uh, verdicts of a constitutional court uh, may be different. Sometimes they were not, but there were judges of, it was said, or it was concerned, uh, different views on the law. The state three, <clears throat> excuse me, is to nominate the members of the national Council of the Judiciary. Not many judges wanted to become uh, uh, the candidates for this uh, positions. Some of them were nominated by uh, the president and uh, uh, two chambers of parliament. But anyway, they had been nominated and the opposition claimed about lists of supports of such people because the lists of support uh, remained secret. They were not opened or claimed to be opened until now. Here the interpretation is whether the law, the statute was broken or not. Even if it was not broken, there is also, or there is again, a question of the style of the soft law, of a standard. Maybe it was suspected they used to support themselves mutually. Yes? So one candidate supported another one and vice versa. Yes? We don't know that. Is this the constitutive, constitutive uh, condition. Maybe it is not, but as I said, there is a question of a style. And stage, let's say, three and a half, that is the between, or something in between. There are attempts to reform the judicial power and some and other spheres by the parliamentary statutes, statutes, sorry. Like for instance, the statute of Institute of the National Remembrance was changed saying that a criminal penalty 
is for a person or an institution who says that Poland participated in the Holocaust during the Second World War. In fact, Poland didn't participate. There was no Poland, by the way. Yes, there was, there were occupational territories. But uh, after a lot of controversies, the uh, new statue was withdrawn. So the government argued first that this is a very fair new regulation. And after that, it resigned from this regulation, stating as before, that is coming back to the past legislation where this statement did not exist. Then there was uh, another uh, point to limit the retirement for the Supreme Court judges from 70 years old to 65 years of age. Uh, again, from the position of the European judiciary, this draft was withdrawn. Was withdrawn. And here, there were more controversies than in the first part. Because it was said that the, let's say, anti-governmental actions, judges, uh, were to be removed. Most of them were more than 65, but less than 70 years old. And if it was so, that would be the pure instrumentalization of law. And number three, uh, two new chambers were introduced in the Supreme Court. Uh, the most controversial was the disciplinary chamber. And the government argued that this is a very good institution because there were a lot of, well, a num at least a number of cases where judges uh, did not perform any criminal responsibility. And on the so-called governmental TV, uh, everybody could see a judge stealing something from uh, the petrol station or uh, by the cashier, a banknote, uh, or uh, from the shop. And nothing happened because his corporation did not perform any serious actions to, uh, well, to fine or to punish him or to prevent such uh, a people from such actions. Or there were uh, uh, some penalties, but very, very uh, minor. In the former uh, Supreme Court, it was argued. And then the disciplinary chamber of the Supreme Court were questions, for instance, by the Court of Justice of the European Union, and it was withdrawn. So it was defeated, it was rejected. Uh, from the 1st of February, the disciplinary chamber stops or is going to stop its existence. Okay. And uh, last but not least, uh, there was a discussion of the independence of judges and its objections. The question of limits, of limits of judges, uh, when the constitution says that judges within exercise of their office shall be independent and subject only to the constitution and the statutes. Okay. Uh, it was argued 
that in the past, it meant, for instance, that a judge was not responsible, responsible uh, to uh, pay fines as a driver. Because in fact, uh, such uh, a claim, such an action stack, stack uh, somewhere in the court. Okay, and this is still to be discussed by the government or by the ruling party or by, or by the uh, parliamentary majority. Uh, the uh, Minister of Justice, who seems to be, uh, well, one of the most controversial uh, uh, person for uh, non-government, uh, let's say, is Firas, says that a disciplinary chamber is going to be replaced by something else, or that the institutions of uh, uh, such disclosures is going to be interpreted soon. <clears throat> but we still don't know, or I still uh, was not able to, uh, to get to know uh, how these institutions are going to be built, okay? So they are still to be discussed when we are going to see the next draft of the government. Uh, and last but not least, there are objections of international, also European unions to uh, European organs to the uh, reforms of the Polish judiciary. First of all, the Venice Commission already in 2015 within the first step of the Constitutional Court and Constitutional Judges nomination. Uh, then the Council of Europe. That is not a EU organ, of course, and every uh, state except Belarus is a member of it within Europe and geographically maybe not uh, only Europe. The European Court of Human Rights, of course, and the court, of, of course, because this is a very deep and detailed court uh, stating about uh, human rights, individual rights, and the Court of Justice of the European Union. Okay. So what are the solutions of legal reforms problems? And I'm sorry to say that, but maybe for the first time, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm more pessimistic than optimistic to solve, that is to see the solution of this problem, of these problems. Uh, there is, uh, I would say, a great controversy between the government and the political oppositions, or the political opposition. First of all, the civil, the civic platform. There is no possibility of any reconciliation, any agreement. Yes. It is even seen very, I would say, directly in both the public and the private media. The public is said to be governmental, the uh, private is said to be oppositional. Uh, <clears throat> then we have no discussion still about the conclusions, about the scopes, about the results of reforms of the Polish judicial, legal, and political system, uh, which is still to be reformed, or that is still to be reformed in the political context. Uh, the third point is the style of performance within political making process. And here the opposition claims that this is the government that breaks the law and the standards. And uh, the government replies that this is the opposition that has no program uh, except selling parts and parts of Poland, and it is not possible to cooperate 
between the government and the opposition that <clears throat> named itself as a total opposition. So there are two uh, <clears throat> amplitudes and it is absolutely no possible, no possibility uh, of reconciliation. This is not possible to any, to get any agreement. Uh, the opposition claims that uh, the point is to remove uh, the system to the point as it used to be, or it had used to be, uh, before Atom 2015. Basically, the lawyers in general have negative approach to government elections. So the general conclusion is that, <clears throat> as I said, uh, such actions are still far from to be completed first. And uh, as it is not possible to get any cooperation between government and the opposition and vice versa, uh, there are at least some more political reforms to be introduced. Uh, first of all, the public health service, and uh, there are no attempts from both sides to, uh, to do that. Although, as I said, this is not a marginal story, but we <clears throat> should say that we have a lot of positive functions of the Polish reform since 1989, and we also should not uh, forget about it from both sides. That is the governmental and the oppositional ones now or at the moment. Thank you very much. It was almost all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I have quite unstable internet connection, so I will keep my camera off. Mm -hmm. um, it was very interesting, and now I would like to um, ask you guys for a question. Uh, Mr. Pomerantzis, but uh, if you could leave the, the floor, please, because I wouldn't like to, uh, to be the host anyway, if you don't mind, of course. Mm -hmm. I don't mind, of course. Oh, I meant uh, uh, Ms. Wukowska to, to uh, I mean, uh, to uh, introduce you or to, to give you the, the floor. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pomerancis, would you like to ask a question or present a comment, please? But I'm not a host, I repeat. Um, Non-questions have sure. been written to me in the chat. Um, and I can't see any, but like from my side, I'm just thinking, um, yeah, I think like your lecture was uh, quite detailed in the analysis of what has happened uh, in the last, you know, seven years and since 2015. And uh, for me, it was definitely a very interesting insight. Um, I don't know any questions don't really come up right now, but I will give it a think. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, I do have a question. Um, as it like, I mean, perhaps it's probably quite controversial, but like, do you think like Poland can be still called as a democracy? Like consider what's happening nowadays? This is a very good question, I would say. This is the uh, basic question, or the, the question number one. And uh, I wouldn't like to get a relativization on that, stating that, uh, uh, first of all, uh, in uh, some uh, international uh, organizations, in some international NGOs, Poland fell down from the position of the 16th place of the most democratic 
uh, country to, I don't know, 18th, uh, maybe, or maybe I do exaggerate. Uh, but um, I think uh, this is not uh, as tragic or tragical situation as it is being described. And uh, first of all, we have to uh, ask a question to ourselves, uh, why this situation or the current situation had happened. And it had happened uh, because of a lot of mistakes or a lot of uh, political tendencies that were or that had been not accepted by the most majority of voters, 40%, uh, uh, in the present or, or of the elections to the present parliament. If we compare Poland uh, with uh, uh, post-Soviet territories, for instance, there is no comparison at all. We may argue that there is an oligarchy system, but it is not an oligarchy system in comparison with Russia, for instance. Uh, nothing uh, happened ever uh, in a post-communist uh, Poland uh, as it had happened. It, it happened in Kazakhstan, for instance, last uh, days. Yes. Uh, However, of course, we do not compare uh, Poland to undemocratic state, but we do to democratic ones. Yes. And here we should argue uh, about the evolution and impact uh, of the current democracy, where, for instance, uh, we discuss uh, whether uh, some uh, uh, some animals uh, have to have uh, uh, political rights, for instance. Yes. Of course, this is a very radical idea, yes. but we have it. And uh, mm, a performer of that is a very eminent professor of one of the most prestigious universities in the world. Yes. Of course, we may argue that this is just an original story. Yes. And it will never uh, happen, although theoretically uh, it can be uh, closer than we uh, realize. So the point of the democracy in Poland can be also seen within the concept of the European Union activity, of the European Union action, of the European Union evolution of rights. Uh, and also the former opposition, yes, the former opposition. Again, the miserability and so on and so on. But on the other side, we may argue that we are getting closer to an authoritarian system. Yes. That never happened before as well. And of course, potentially, uh, this is the danger. So as the classic tend to say, every power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So I would say that this is, of course, a democratic state, but in one way or another, it needs, or another, it needs to be observed directly because potentially we may have a situation when uh, the current political governmental power can increase. Yes. There is always a problem of control. I mean, we can observe like recently, like when the government uh, we're using Pegasus to like, get to know information about the opposition and invalidate them. Um, so I guess it's like, mm -hmm. I Again, mean, I personally don't think like the Poland could be like yeah. a democratic, democratic country anymore. 
But meanwhile, we get messages from the chat, and I would like to read out. Yes. Uh, so um, let me interfere you for, for a while. Uh, you may see that because th this is your personal observation yeah? uh, or personal view, but I may argue that, for instance, in a lot of uh, spheres of the society, oppositional uh, attitude, oppositional approach to most of the uh, uh, problems uh, are, uh, I would say, dominant. Yes? For instance, the universities or the cities or towns. Yes? They are very oppositional towards the government. Uh, in Warsaw, an oppositional candidate won with no problem uh, the municipal presidential elections. If the, the, there was no problem really uh, with falsification of, uh, of um, uh, 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 elections, municipal elections, we may say that still a democracy is uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, in, in a way to, to perform, yes, of course, with uh, uh, some potential, uh, potential dangers. Uh, but uh, as I said, this is not, uh, this is not uh, a very simple story, yes, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, of so, course, there's not like, there's no democracy in Poland anymore, but like there are some issues. Yeah. I, I um, heard, sorry, the, the last sentence really. I remember the situation when in 2014, I think, or 2012, it was said that the municipal elections were forced. Were forced and uh, everybody agreed with that. And they were uh, treated as uh, not binding, yes, there were another ones. And that was a very, I would say, serious situation, yes. Okay, but I don't want to say in a Soviet joke that uh, when the computer, because uh, to a teacher, it is said that uh, a teacher has to say a joke uh, at least once a quarter, yes, that is every 15 minutes. So I remember a joke a Soviet joke, when uh, there was a statement, a question uh, put uh, in a sheet of paper to the uh, most modern Soviet computer, uh, what is the uh, uh, reason of lack of uh, meat, fruits, vegetables, and so on in the Soviet Union? And the answer was, uh, and in your country, Black people are being bitten, yes? So I wouldn't like to present such an argumentation, yes? To answer this question. There are, if there are dangers, we have to name that, but on the other side, we don't need to exaggerate. Okay, please notice right. that no one laughed uh, <laughs> because of the political joke uh, from the Soviet times. Hmm? Yeah, um, all right, like, I Another question um, from Anna. Uh, she said, it was interesting to hear how Poland got organized after the communism, but it seems they missed a system of checks and balances to stabilize the overall political system. Uh, again, a very nice question. Uh, constitutionally, the system of checks and balances is very much okay. Uh, we always faced uh, a question between the presidential and the parliamentary systems. In the Second Polish Republic, before the wars, uh, it was a presidential system because the, uh, the parliamentary system fell down at all. And at the moment, we have a mixture. So this is still excuse me, a parliamentary one, but with some substantial uh, competences of the president. Uh, we have a check and balance 
between two chambers of the parliament in which in the lower chamber, the law and justice, law and justice has the majority and the opposition has the majority uh, in the upper chamber, in the Senate, yes? And the judiciary is really independent. Yes? Uh, I say in general, yes? Or it was very independent. So I don't really uh, uh, see uh, any problems with check and balances, with an exception that, of course, if you have 40% uh, of voters and a majority of more than 50% in the parliament, uh, this is uh, always a problem of it. Yes. Okay. Uh, I would wonder how these constitutional and judicial fellows are influencing the everyday life and political life of Polish citizens. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but most of the Polish citizens uh, do not worry about judicial fellows. Uh, I heard it again in the governmental, no, well, in the public, I would say, okay, I will be saying in the public television, uh, in the public news uh, at 7.30, uh, yesterday, exactly this statement that we do not care uh, as, uh, or they do not care as the ruling party uh, about uh, judicial fellows because an average citizen of any country does not really care what the problems between the competences of the constitutional uh, judges are. If it is so, of course, this is said, we are not elitarists, but uh, in general, the Polish citizens uh, do not feel in fear in any case. Although, for instance, we had uh, large manifestations uh, on uh, the right to abortions, to abortion for instance, 200 meters uh, from me, uh, from my place where I am now, uh, the leader of law and justice lives yes? uh, in, a modest, uh, in a modest house. Uh, so sometimes we see a number of police people, police forces, because there are a lot of uh, people manifesting by his house yes, or beside his house. Yeah. By the way, that may also be an argument uh, for democracy in Poland, yes, or vice versa. Yeah. They manifest, they make a manifestation. Uh, a lot of ultra left uh, people uh, as well, because they demand against. Uh, limiting their democracy, or this is a democracy and they can manifest, just make a manifestation. Mm, all right, I have like another question. Like, do you think that the law and justice will make till the end, till 2024 for like next election without like the coalition collapsing? 2023, I, yeah. would, think, I would think so. Yes, that is, I, I'm almost sure. Uh, it is said that uh, that uh, law and justice is going to defeat uh, the next parliamentary elections, uh, but uh, I don't know what uh, to defeat means. If it is uh, uh, to defeat the possibility to have uh, the whole government, uh, it may be so. But on the other side, this is a a powerful party, and it has uh, uh, a lot of, I would say, social achievements yeah, uh, that were, or that had been criticized uh, by uh, the parliamentary opposition. So the first uh, point was the so-called 500 plus. That is 500 zlotters, about 120 euros, uh, per month uh, for a single child uh, 
a full stop without any uh, conditions, without any reasons. There was a question uh, that uh, uh, there were a lot of demographical problems. So the number of poles used to decrease. Please notice that this is a homogenic country. Yes. Uh, now we realized that we have a lot of emigrants, uh, about five or seven percent of the population, uh, and they are Ukrainians. So they have the same color of skin. Nobody is a racist here. Yes? But it was not uh, uh, it was not seen uh, before. But anyway, this is a still homogenic uh, state, and a lot of female poles used to uh, have children, uh, sorry, used to have children, I'm sorry for this mistake, used to have children in British islands, where the uh, Polish immigration is very, very large. Uh, it is about 1 million Poles in, uh, in uh, uh, Britain. So the government uh, had an idea to give everybody five, 500 zlotys per month per a single child. Yes. If there are uh, many children, if there are many children in families, this is uh, uh, something. Yes, uh, and uh, it is said it didn't work out. Uh, uh, some, I wouldn't say governmental, but some uh, demographists uh, say uh, that it does. Yes, but nevertheless, I don't have an information uh, about that. Uh, that was the first government that introduced any action on that. Yes. And now there are a lot of tax deductions. Yes. And, uh, well, this is uh, another reason uh, for, uh, for law and justice uh, popularity. Yes. Uh, the civic platform uh, said openly by their economists that it is not possible to uh, be given any money to anybody because the budget is always empty or there was a budget hole very often. Now it is said this is not a budget hole even in the pandemia. Yes. But this is an economist who should be asked about that. Hmm. Go ahead, please. I'm here to discuss or to try to answer the questions. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. Um, so Poland's becoming um, more like authoritarian, like the judicial reforms and all of that. And it's clashing with the values of the EU. Like, they've sued Poland at this point in European courts and they're challenging the supremacy of European law. Um, like, at what point do you think that Poland could possibly diverge so much with EU values that they have no other option than to leave? And why would they want to do that? Because, like, why would they we tried to push the EU so much because surely it's better to be in the EU and help the EU, especially in Eastern Europe, like to compare Belarus to Poland. Like, what, what's the end game here? I thank you very much for, for the question. Unfortunately, I didn't hear you properly, okay? But we uh, probably work it out uh, now. Uh, I don't know what values you mean. Because, of course, it would be very easy to say that, for instance, uh, mm, there is a universal value of, uh, uh, I don't know, egalitarian uh, a position of an individual, and uh, uh, this or this party is against. So this is very bad, and this is very simple, yes. Uh, so this is like you see, uh, uh, for instance, two candidates uh, for uh, the president. Uh, uh, 
uh, one looks normally, another one looks like an idiot. And uh, this is, of course, your task to uh, decide to which one, uh, to who, to whom uh, you would like to vote. Yes, and uh, the medium uh, can just support you in this matter, of course, objectively. Mm -hmm. uh, so the point uh, is what the values really are. And uh, in, uh, during our studies, uh, we, have, uh, we had uh, ethics as a subject. And I'm sorry to say that I don't really remember what the subject was about. That is, as a professor of legal sciences, I know what ethics is. Yeah. But uh, I don't know what uh, ethics during the or within the public uh, life can really be and in what circumstances. And uh, generally, we are very linked to the situation that there is a, a large private life sphere where any or to where any government must not interfere. So for instance, what color of my hair I have is my own, sorry for the academic, uh, sorry for the American expression, business. And that was the Federal Constitutional Court of Germany stating that because the governmental official was fired from his job because he was Iroquois. Yes. And he had a, a, a very a interesting frisur of a, a green color. Yes. So being a representative of a state, it was possible to have such her, but uh, already in the second uh, instance, the Federal Constitutional Court uh, shared this opinion. Yes. Where the values are controversial ethically, I doubt whether uh, they have to be applicable towards everybody if they are regulated. And the uh, Polish society, I spent five and a half months in the, the Netherlands, so it is not too much. Polish society seems to be much more conservative than the Dutch one, for instance. Yeah. I wouldn't say about, uh, well, some places uh, in Dutch towns uh, which are uh, popular or which are typical for, uh, for the Netherlands only perhaps. Yes. Uh, but saying seriously, uh, it should not be neglected as well. And as a lawyer, I'm waiting to a for a serious discussion to say whether this value is directly binding from this provision of the treaty or not. Or whether, for instance, it is okay to make a statement that this minor factory is going to be uh, shut, is going to be closed immediately because it is bad uh, for uh, uh, the environment, and this is Polish, and for a single day extra, a government has to pay a half million of euro, a half million euros uh, fine, or whether this is impossible to get such a fine, uh, because also because of the fact there are nine uh, minor factories in this area as well. And they are, no po they are not Polish. As a lawyer, I may say that this is, again, not so simple. So when the government says that the Polish government says it's absolutely against the law, yes, I doubt it. Yes, but on the other side, 
uh, as a lawyer, I have never observed such an action from the court, from the international public court. No? And again, it implicates the conflict. So what are the values here? The European universal values. And again, we have no discussion on that. So an, as an everyday citizen, I have no answer to that. What disappoints me, implicite in which or by which uh, I disappoint you. Yes? So when we say that Poland does not share European Union values, this is just a very uh, general statement. Yes, which values? In what kind? That is in what situations? And with pleasure. That is, I can listen to to that, and then uh, when I put it down, I I can search uh, about it. Yes. But please notice, again, I do not represent anybody here. Yes. I'm saying about the controversies. Because if you want to uh, present someone from two sides, you should invite two politicians. Yes. And they will tell you, yes. In the end, of course, they could say, OK, vote for me, please, in the next elections. Yes. But this is another story. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think uh, we have time for one more question. I believe Gabor has I, raised I, his hand. I have time for 10 more questions. Yes. Because originally yeah. I had to be in Hreningen now. And I had to, uh, I had to have a, a plane tomorrow back to Poland. So I'm in a very good position now to, to listen to your questions, if you like, of course. Uh, Mr. Ershek, if I pronounce your family name correctly. More or less, thank you very much. Um, I wonder, because you mentioned, you mentioned that the, the Polish uh, relation to the European Union uh, connected to the European values, and they just came to my my mind that uh, how do you see the similarities or differences uh, between the Polish EU relations and Hungarian EU relations? Thank you very much, Mr. Reszek. Uh, it would be really nice, honestly, as you know, I'm linked to the United States as well, uh, to uh, ask you to answer this question. Yes. Because uh, I I uh, really have very, very little information about that. Yes. Uh, it was said that um, it was uh, performed on the way of the former uh, of the former Hungarian uh, approach to all these questions. Yes. Last time. Uh, I read uh, a speech of the Hungarian prime minister uh, stating what happened to, to Hungary uh, and why all of this uh, happens now at the moment for, for some years. Uh, to me, uh, as a lawyer, there is uh, always a constitutional question whether it is possible to replace uh, uh, a government by another government uh, within the uh, parliamentary elections. Yes, and uh, as far as I uh, as I uh, uh, know, uh, your government is quite stable. So uh, it has been in power for how many years? The eleven. 11, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is really long. And uh, the point is that uh, it has to uh, have, um, well, <clears throat> a potential uh, a power, yes, um, uh, of, uh, of uh, the society. 
that is from the, the society. So as far as I, uh, as I know, there are a lot of similarities uh, between Poland and Hungary in restructuring, maybe this is also a good work, word, not only reforming, but restructuring uh, the post-communist system. Yes. Uh, it was said that all the reforms of the judiciary were introduced or had been introduced first in Hungary. And that was uh, uh, your prime minister who came to the leader of law and justice and they used to talk quite a long time uh, about these problems. But of course, this is uh, only a political statement. Uh, we have no uh, information about that, yes. Uh, I heard, and that was, uh, that was uh, uh, a well-known story, uh, that in Budapest, one of the universities uh, was closed because it was said to be uh, extremely left. Yeah? Uh, and it has no, uh, uh, it does not uh, uh, exist uh, anymore. We didn't have anything like that, of course. Although universities tend to be left, yes, uh, generally speaking, except law faculties, because law students tend to be not very left. Uh, again, it is said. So again, I, I'm sorry to, to uh, say that, but I have no information about Hungary, except the general media information. Yes? So you really, know better uh, what happened in, uh, in uh, Hungary. And in this case, we can uh, find similarities easily um, uh, after my presentation, yes, with, uh, with your information. Mr. Ershek, are you still there? Yes, yes, I'm still here. Um, and based on, based on what I see that I, uh, I didn't know that actually that these kind of issues what uh, raised in Poland was actually tried out and tested in Hungary. Uh, like, of course, I know what kind of system I, li like I lived in uh, when I was living in Hungary, or what I also knew from the media. Okay. Anyway, as I said, I, I have no uh, deep or substantial information about uh, Hungary, uh, except the very general uh, against or for uh, your government information from, from the Polish media. Yes. I had a, a proposal to give um, an interview uh, to the uh, governmental, <clears throat> excuse me, newspaper in Budapest, and I refused because uh, I said that I still have no information about that, and I would not like to be involved in one side or another side political quarrel. Yes, also abroad. All right, I believe everyone who wanted to ask a question okay. did that. Um, so thank you again very much. Thank you very much. For, for an interesting discussion and obviously the, the lecture. And I would like to wish you all the best for uh, New Year. And thank, thank you very much for accepting thank, our invitation. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Of course, we can uh, have such uh, discussions uh, also within the modern technologies, uh, which was very, uh, very easy. Thank you very much indeed. It was uh, a pleasure and all the best for the new year to uh, all of you as well, of course. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.